All right, everybody, I've got Gabe here. And we are a class two div one deep bite with crowding. Let me show you what that means. Gabe has been in some treatment now for a little bit. We are, first we should class two. Remember that refers to in the very back, our molars back here, the way that they fit on top of each other. Same thing on both sides. Sometimes you've got, you know, one molar on one side that could fit a certain way. So if the top molar is too far forward, then you can end up in theory with extra overbite, what we call overjet, all right? So we call it a class two when your top teeth are further in front of your bottom teeth. Then we said deep bite. That means that our top teeth, in this case, we cover. This is actually what we, what we as orthodontists, we refer to as overbite. The top teeth come down past the bottom teeth. Everybody should have the top teeth in front of the bottom teeth at least a little bit. And then the top teeth should come down past the bottom teeth a little bit. We don't want you to have an open bite and we don't want you to hit edge to edge like that. So, but in this case, a deep bite can be damaging to our lower teeth, the edges right here. And sometimes they can be damaging if the teeth on the bottom were so deep, they hit on the gum tissue right there. And I've seen it where those bottom teeth can dig into those tissue, but over time, we're talking generally over time and it can lead to recession of those gums and even damage on the teeth so not very good okay the other thing that we said we were crowded we'll show a picture here in a second but basically this tooth back here had grown in from behind and you know that is pretty normal when you're crowded your teeth at least the teeth next to the front teeth the permanent teeth they tend to grow a little bit behind the baby teeth and they grow up and then in well if we're especially if we're crowded they're the only real place for them to grow in is is behind sometimes you'll see some teeth pop out to the front but we do see if we're really crowded those teeth tend to come on the inside so like you could get a tooth that pops out back here in the front right or down here well first off when do you manage the class two right if you have excessive overjet especially if it's significant. What we've learned is that the ideal time to try and take care of something like that is when we're going through our major growth spurt. Deep bites, same kind of thing. You wait until you're going through a major growth spurt and you try to correct the deep bite during that point so that hopefully growth can help you. And finally, crowding. Crowding, it depends, right? How much the crowding is affecting the other permanent teeth and them coming into place. So anyways, in this case, when you're dealing with crowding, you can either take out teeth or you can try to expand. And expansion can be done a couple different ways. We use a Haas expander. You can see that this space is spread out quite a bit. And this is the acrylic on the inside that pushes up against the gums, but not everybody uses it like this. Sometimes they just have a metal framework. We've got those little bands that fit around the teeth. We glue those on, and then we have the bar that reaches forward to kind of push things out. And we hope that we get the bone on top. This little, this right here, the middle of this area is called your, well, this area right here is your palate. And then this right here is your mid palatal suture. And when you're young enough, you can actually use the expander to spread your palate apart and even gain extra space. So if you're trying to, you know, if you got a little bit crowded, you spread some things out. Or if you have a cross bite, you spread some things out. We do, in this case, we did a bottom expander where we're helping to spread the teeth out. The bottom, you don't get the same kind of bone change, right? This is your mandible and you can't put your mandible <laughs> like your, the, your top jaw bone. And so when you do an expander on the bottom or when you, when you use braces, you're just really tipping some teeth out and the bone, the teeth are changing the bone that the teeth sit in. So right through here, we've decided in this case that we weren't going to take out teeth, that we're going to try and push our teeth on the sides out so that we can make space for this tooth to pull that in. We got some pretty cool mechanics going on right here. We got the wire in place. We're trying to create space for that canine that's coming in here push these teeth over that way so that we can get that tooth to come in. In this case, we need this tooth right here. You can't see how it's twisted. Okay, see? There you go, yeah. So this tooth needs to be twisted in. It needs to come up this way, right? Rotate. And so we've attached a power chain there. Pull it, twist it that way, and pull it up at the same time. We'll get that into better position, and then we're waiting for some other permanent teeth to come in, and we're considering when we can make our comprehensive enhancements, like we talked about, right, with the bite, and uh, it, whether, you know, front to back, excessive overjet, or overbite. So this is how we began, right? We had all of our permanent teeth that had erupted in, and then we had a permanent tooth that popped out on the inside because there just wasn't enough space right here. This is our deep bite, right? You can see how they you can't see any of our bottom teeth at all. And again, in theory, over time, if the bottom teeth are touching on the inside of the gums, then you could damage those gums or even the teeth 
over time, maybe even wear down teeth. So there's a, there's a good angle that we try to shoot for with these teeth in the front. This is something that we try to address a little bit later unless it's causing some pain at this point in time. All right, so basically we've been doing this for several months. Okay, what do you have to tell the world? Merry uh, Christmas, happy birthday, make good choices. Please just have a good day. Ooh, have a good day, I love that, all right? Okay, so second question is, when you heard that you might be getting braces or expanders, what were you thinking? Like, what was going through your mind? Like, uh, what what am I going to eat for dinner? Not really. Any concerns? No concerns, really. Just, uh, would it hurt? That is a common thing. Everybody wants to know if braces, expanders, all those things are going to hurt. So, what would you think? What, what, when we actually put it in, how was that? Uh, it wasn't that bad when you put it in, but over time it gets a little bit tough because of the soreness. Ooh, but... Talk about that. Did, when did you feel soreness? Just for a few days after you put it in. After the expander goes in or after the braces are in? After both. Go. Both. Okay, so we put the expanders in and we move the teeth and the braces move the teeth and that can cause soreness on the teeth. It's an inflammatory process. How about your lips and your tongue and your... How, how did, all, is it, did that hurt necessarily when it was in or did it just the soreness that you felt? Mainly just the soreness. Mainly just the soreness. So your like, cheeks and lips and you're used to it now or what? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Did you ever get any really bad, like, ulcers or blisters or anything like that? Blisters. Ulcers or, like, cuts in your lips, anything like that? No. No? No? No big deal. Let me ask you this. This is an important question. There are some guidelines as far as what you should and shouldn't eat with braces and expanders. Yes. What's the worst thing that you've eaten with expanders or braces? Probably crunchy stuff or chewy stuff. Crunchy and chewy stuff. Like, like we're talking like granola or like a candy. Mainly stuff like Twizzler. Oof. Being a Twizzler guy. So what'd you Skittles, suggest? man. Oof, Skittles. Oof. Holy jawbreaker. You gotta watch out for the Skittles, okay? This guy has done, he's gotten lucky. He's gotten lucky. Watch out for the hard, chewy, crunchy candies. One, because they can, you know, break stuff. But two, it can also increase the risk of you getting cavities. So Gabe has done a good job. He hasn't broken anything, so lucky you. Way to avoid it. <laughs> I'm too. Anything else that you think that people should know? The people. Er, about braces, about here. Not really, just don't be afraid, don't be insecure about them. Acknowledge them and be happy that you got. You know what? I think it is a blessing. So... Well done, Gabe. Thanks for being here. If you have crowding for excessive overbite, deep bite, come find us. You might just find Gabe. You'll definitely find me. We can talk about those things and how we can fix them. Share this with a friend. Like our channel. Leave a comment below so that we can continue to open your eyes to the wonderful world of straight teeth and beautiful bites. That's all I've got. Just a little PFO and so you know where you're going. Packard and Gabe, out.